I wanted to give an overview of the highlights from Aptera in June. There was a lot to go over. In the June webinar, we got a lot of new information. Starting with the factory overview. At their first factory in Carlsbad, California, which will be the final assembly plant, they will have over 200,000 square feet of manufacturing space. I think this will give them plenty of space to get to volume production while they scope out where they want factory number two. They have ordered equipment to stage the factory for production later this year. Red Viking will provide automated guidance vehicles or AGVs, which will move the vehicles around the plant station to station and they charge while stationary. Their planned second factory will be sub-assembly. I didn't specify which sub-assembly would be built there. Once the production setup is complete, there will be 12 stations to assemble Aptera in two hours. Pretty impressive. Next up is powertrain. Ilafe will deliver the motors to Aptera in the U.S. to start. Ilafe has custom built a motor to physically meet the needs for Aptera. Making it more efficient, the windings of the wire are more efficient, better motor losses, efficiency, etc. Looking at the new renders of it, they trimmed off all the metal they can to lighten the motor. Looking forward to hearing more about the spec improvements of this later. Battery updates. They will source the 21700 NMC 811 cylindrical cells from the supplier Eve Energy, which is one of the suppliers. They mentioned their production run order. They've mentioned this before, but it's good to have confirmation again. So the 400 mile range they'll be putting out first, 250 mile range next, 600, and then the 1000 range will be last. I personally have the 600 mile range option. I'm content to wait until they are available. This will be my primary vehicle and I will own it long term. So I'd rather wait for the extra mileage and battery capacity. On the charging port, nothing is set in stone on which charging port they will install in the vehicle. Chris made it very clear they prefer the Tesla plug. I'm open to this idea to keep the tail of the Aptera smaller if they didn't have to go with CCS. It's also unclear where the charging port will be. Currently on the alphas, it's in the tail. I heard back in early 2021 that it might be in the hood area also. I'm sure we'll get confirmation on where the charger is and what they decide later this year. The chassis. The beta suspension has gone through extensive tests passing skid pad tests, even driving over a curb at 45 degrees, which resulted in pop tires. But the suspension and the body handled it perfectly and passed. No filming was allowed at the testing track. So we'll just have this image after the test day on the track. The wheel covers. They confirm they're going with 20 millimeter foam bumpers to help absorb low speed impacts without damage. The top of the wheel cover is a plastic lens for what I assume is daytime running lights and turn signals. It's made from sheet molded carbon. The inner liner is bonded together permanently. It has been ran through simulations to meet the stiffness requirements so the shape doesn't move while driving. This will be validated and tested with Gamma, which is being built and will be revealed in the next three to four weeks. The body controls. In keeping with their core mindset of efficiency, they even have the weight of the wires in mind. They're using point of use controllers instead of running all wires from a central computer in the front of the car. This results in far less wires, smaller, weighs less, and less connection points. Mazaki is helping with the wiring harness. They already provide support for half of the new cars sold today. They know what they're doing. Currently two methods for getting into the car, an RFID card or an app on the phone via Bluetooth, then knock on the V pillar twice to unlock the car. Pretty cool idea. 
solar updates. This is the largest group of engineers on Aptera. They have over 50 patents in progress. They're designing and testing for a 20 year lifespan. It seems like there's four more solar cells on the hood and more on other parts of the car. They teased this. I'm guessing there'll be more in the solar hatch or perhaps an expandable solar panel option when parked. We'll see in the coming months. Some more info on Gamma. 1% bigger, less drag by several percent, more headroom, etc. There'll be a physical Gamma, including the interior in the next three to four weeks. There are modules in the center console. Looking at the photos, seem like they attached the mounting points along a center. I'm sure we'll see more module types closer to production. For portions of the interior, they are using pineapple leather. I've heard about this many years ago. I love the concept. Nice to see somebody putting it to use. In the middle console, they'll use cork. I'm hoping once Gamma is released, they will update the vehicle configurator to show the updated three color interiors. They also mentioned you'll be able to experience Gamma in VR soon. And they mentioned an update to the lighting system, saying it's unique to be shown in a month or so. I don't have any ideas on what this might be. Shoot your ideas in the comments. They have signed supply agreements with the following companies. Red Viking for the automated guided vehicles for Aptera's final vehicle assembly. Izaki for wiring on Aptera for high and low voltage. Eve Energy is one of the suppliers for the battery cells. And Marathon Capital LLC will facilitate the company's proposed Series B capital raise up to 200 million, which I imagine will take them into production they also had a Q&A session at their webinar recently. After they released Gamma, they're also working on Delta, which will come in a few months' time. They'll scale up production in 2023, small deliveries at the end of this year. USA orders first. The first 1,000 will be the 400-mile range option, the 40 kilowatt. And those should be built in the first couple of months. They said 40% of the pre-orders at the 400 mile range. There's over 11,000 investors, 25,000 pre-orders. Their goal is to complete six factories. Someone had a question on the all-wheel drive range hit. They're not sure yet on that. All the street legal requirements were done. That's good to hear. The level two autonomy, they said it will be added later as an add-on. I'm not sure what they meant by this. I'm assuming it's just a software over the air update. That's easy enough. I would assume they would have all the camera sensors in place when they ship the vehicle. No heat pump at the moment. That will come later. I would guess maybe two to three years out. Let me know what you think of all these updates. I have a feeling the summer and fall are going to be very exciting for Aptera fans. See you next time.